It should be in the week eight folder. Hopefully it's published, easy to find. By the way, it looks like the lecture M video did not upload. I will upload it again as we, uh, once we end class here so that it'll be there. No content. Well, shucky darn. Well, we'll do one by hand. Load up, good old idle, something like that. Make a new document. Can't believe that. Where to go? All righty. Quote, quote, quote. This is a logic worksheet. And for these purposes, we're going to assume that A is 0 and B is 12. That'll just make things real easy. And we're going to have 10 problems to solve. And what does solve mean? Well, just remember that or means both sides, either side could be true for the result to be true. Right, are you sick or tired? You know how to answer that, right? If you're either sick or you're tired, you would say yes. Are you sick and tired? You'll only say yes if both of those are true, right? So and, can I type? And means both sides must be true for the result to be true. So if you had these variables, age equals 30 and weight equals, you know, 160. And if you wrote this, if age greater than 18 and weight greater than 100, is that true or false? Well, is age greater than 18? Sure is, it's 30. Is weight greater than 100? Sure, so both sides are true, right? They're hooked up with an and. So the result is true, right? So that whole thing equal true. Except in uh, Python, they really like true and false to be capitalized. So I should have been doing that the whole time. All right, how about or? If age equals equals 160 or weight equals equals 160, is that true or false? Well, or means only one of them has to be true. And is it true that either one of them is equal to 160 or the other one is equal to 160? I hear people typing, so I know you're paying attention. Somebody, don't be shy. Right? It's true. Because although age is not equal 30, excuse me, although this is false, this is true. Just like I am sick or tired. Are you sick or tired? Yeah, you might be tired even though you're not sick. Or means only one of these have to be true. And although that one is false, this one is true. So that result is true. How about this one? If age is less than 18, and weight is greater than 100. Well, is this true? Is age less than 18? Y'all know where to look for this, right? The age variable is 30, so tell me if age is less than 18. No. No, it's not, right? Okay. And since this is and, and requires both of these to be true, we already know the whole thing's false. We don't even need to keep going, right? Just like to, if, if to vote you had to be, you know, a citizen of the United States and more than 18, if those were the only criteria. If you weren't a citizen of the United States, then it doesn't matter what your age is. So, that one's definitely false. Because only one of them is true. How about this one? If age is equal to weight or age is less than weight or means it's true 
if only one side is true. They don't both have to be true. And so is it true that age is equal to weight? One's 30, 160. So is it true that age is equal to weight? No. Nope. Okay, so that's false. But since it's or, it could still work, even if this one is true. And is age less than weight? Yes. Yeah, so since it's an or, that's good enough. You only need one condition to be true. Hope that makes sense. We're going to do the same thing with these. First one's going to be easy. I'm just going to type them all out. You don't have to answer them, out and, you know, but I'm just going to type them all out to begin with. And I'm not going to stick the word if in front of it. I don't know. That, I guess that makes it easier to read. But technically, to be an expression, you don't have the word if in it because the if, the expression is the thing after the word if. But why not? So if age. No, wait, wait. We're not dealing with age and weight anymore. We're doing our logic worksheet, right? So if A equals equals B. That's going to be the first one. If not parentheses A equals equals B, and that parentheses is not absolutely necessary, what does that mean? Well, here, let's do one more. If age is less than 40, is that true? Is age less than 40? Definitely true, right? So if not parentheses age less than 40, that's just the opposite. The word not flips it. So if this is true, which it is, then the not makes it false, right? Just like if you say, are you not sick? Yeah, I am not sick, right? So if sick is equal to false, not sick equals true. <clears throat> so that's true. So if A equals zero or B equals equals zero, <clears throat> if A equals <clears throat> zero and B equals equals zero, if A is less than B and A is greater than or equal to B, if A is less than B and or B is greater than or equal, excuse me, A is greater than or equal to B. If A is equal to B and A is not equal to B, if A is equal to B or A not equal to B. Oh, and I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 not equal is fair, right? It just means the opposite of equal, equal. I didn't demonstrate that up here, but if we've done this, if <coughs> age not equal weight, well, Age is 30, weight is 160. So it's true that they're not equal. So that's definitely a true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need 10 of them. If A is less than 30, or B is less than 30, if A is greater than 30, and B is less than 30, I think that's enough. I think that's enough. That's 10 of them. All right, go ahead and work on them. Just for a few minutes, pretend it's a quiz, although I'm gonna give you all the right answers, right? Anyways, so don't totally panic, but I'm gonna walk around to make sure that you're doing, taking an honest stab at it. I hope you are. If you want, you can go to the Logic Worksheet Dropbox and just click on it and download it and open it that way. How do you download it? I believe you just click on the file name and it should ask to save it. That'll just save you time, but if you've already typed it all in, great, use what you've already typed in. And to fill it out, just like this, right, where I said if A is equal, equal to B, just put equals true, because it's true, right? Is the first one true or false? I goofed that one up. Is A equal, equal to B? No, that's false, definitely, because A is 0 and B is 12. How many th folks think that that's false? It is because I wrote false up there and I happen to be right this time. How about this one? 
Well, if not A, excuse me, if A is equal to B is false, not reverses it, right? So what is that one? True. Yep, it's true. Is this large enough? There we go. How about this one? Always look for the keyword first because it lets you know how, you know, how hard it is, whether they both have to be true or only one has to be true. Or means only one has to be true. So is A equal to zero? Yes. Yeah, sure is. So we can even skip this one. Or means if the first one's true, the whole thing has to be true. And means both of them have to be true. So on the next one, they both better be true. And this is, in fact, true, but B is not equal to zero. So false on that one. All right, now these two are trick questions in a way. I think the book, irrelevant is not the term. There, there was some term for it. Something that's either always true or always false. Is it true that A is less than B and A is greater than or equal to B? Well, is A less than B? Yeah, yeah that's true. Is A greater than or equal to B? No, and it's and, so they both better be true, so that's false. This expression is an example of one that can never be true. There's no way for it to be true. Doesn't matter if they're both zeros, right? Ones, it doesn't matter what order you put A and B in, it's just flat out never true. The second one's never false. Is it true that A is less than B? Or, okay, we, we've already got a true, but pretend that might be false. If this is true, then this is false. But if this is false, this has to be true because these are opposites. Remember when I listed the opposites? The opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. The opposite, I said that wrong. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. The opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. And the opposite of equal equal is not equal. Remember those? And so if you or two things that are opposites, one of them's going to be true, and the other one's not, but that's enough to get it to be a true. Did anybody get that one wrong and need further talk about that one? The third one is also one of those irrelevant ones. I, I know the book used a different term. I hope I can recall it. Is A equal equal to B? No, A is not equal to B. So is A not equal to B? Is that true? Yeah. That is true. But and means both sides have to be true. So it's false because both sides of them weren't true. And any value of A and B you chose would make this false, no matter what. This expression is always false. Now, I don't care about the fact that you know whether an expression is always true or always false. But the... Uh, I mean, I want you to have the idea, and maybe one of the quiz questions asks that. We'll, we'll see pretty soon. But, you know, if A is equal to B, then there's no way that it's not equal to B, and vice versa. But if there was an OR there, it would always be true. Like this, right? Is A equal to B? No. Is A not equal to B? It's true that they are not equal. OR means only one of them has to be true. So that's yet another one of those things that's always either true or always equal to false. It's a, it's a poor expression. All right. I've been talking through those. I want somebody to tell me this one. Is A less than 30 or B less than 30? It's true. Definitely true. A is certainly less than 30. And what do you know? So is B. So even if it had been an and, it would have been true. Alrighty, how about A greater than 30 and B less than 30? False. Definitely false. Because although it's true that B is less than 30, it's not true that A is greater than 30 and AND means both of them had to be true. Alright, so go ahead and save that as is, even if you call it a lecture or whatever. I don't care what you name it. Just go ahead and upload it to that folder. The folder is in week 8. Ache. Week 8. And it's called Logic Worksheet. Maybe it's just called Worksheet. I don't remember.
logic worksheet. I mean, it's an easy 10 points, right? We went over it in class. You're going to get full credit for it. I would make my med uh, my usual joke, too much cold medicine, but then people would start to worry, so I'm not going to make that joke. <laughs> All righty, so there it is. There it is, there it is. It's there now. Not enough caffeine. That's my fallback joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if you scroll way down to the Feral Programming Logic and Design 9E Mind Tap, that's an unwieldy folder name, but okay, and click on Unit 4 Test. And you remember your C engage password and all that stuff. Then when you click load unit four test in a new window, it should take you into it. Now I had a heck of a time getting that to work yesterday, so I certainly know that it can fail. I had to call her, I had to email our customer service rep and say, why is it not letting me in? And then they said, okay, we changed your password. And then it magically worked without me even having typed the password. So I know they did more to just change the password. All right, your work in this activity will not be recorded until you complete all tasks and submit. So we have to go from beginning to end. That is 20 questions. We'll be able to do that in our time allotted. If you can't get into C-Engage for some reason, like you forgot your password or something, just watch it anyways, right? You're about to take the test. Good, I'm feeling good about that. Oh no, is there no way for me to start over at one? Really? It's going to require three clicks to get past each one of these. Oh well, it won't take long. I guess they do that so that you can't just get it wrong and then immediately restart it to take a second stab at that question. Tedious. All righty. Sorry. 11, 12, click, click, 13, click, click, 14, click, click. 15, click, click, and by the way, they just didn't really care, did they? They didn't indent all, everything, so you're just going to have to eyeball it and understand that after an if statement, and between the if and the else, it needs to be indented, and I apologize for their failure on that. I am going to dent stuff, indent stuff correctly if I ask a question like that on the exam. I should take screenshots of these, mail them to our customer service rep and say, fix these or we're dumping your product. See how quickly they move. Probably not that fast. Anyways, almost. Last question. All right. Complete the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out. See if I can go back in it. All right, it's possible that you've already started it, in which case you're just going to have to wait until I catch up. So when you use a range, oh, no, they're in random order. Okay, fine, just watch me take notes. <laughs> I did not realize they were in random order. My mistake. So when you're doing a range check, you always compare a variable to a value in the range. When you do a range check, you always compare a variable 
to the value in the range. Now I'm stymied on this one because you have to check it to both the highest and the lowest, right? Because that's what range means. So I'm totally stymied. So I'm going to go with this one, an end of range value, and see if I get it right. All righty. Okay. That's a really poorly written question in my mind because I'm way smarter than they are. That's why I don't make as much money as they do. So to do a range check, according to them, you check against the end of range value. Now to me it should say values, right? It should be plural. I say it should be plural. They didn't. That was my question one. Question two. Which of the letter choices is equivalent to the following decision? And here they completely failed to indent. It's okay for you to copy and paste it and indent it yourself in order to fix the question. After every if, And they left off one of their end diffs, slip shot. Oh, no, there's two of them. Here I insulted them, and it's right there. Okay, so there's a logic for that. That's the pseudocode for it. Which of the letter choices is equivalent? Now, if you have two things nested like it, is it okay for just only one of them to be true? Is it going to get to that statement if only one of these ifs is true? Well, what if this wasn't true? What if x was 0? Would it even get there? You know how those statements work. If this is false, is it going to get to the indented code? What are you going to do then? Nobody's paying attention. You know how those statements work. If I do this, if age is less than 30, print cool. And if I set age here, equal to 99, is it going to print cool? Yeah. Nah, okay, right. So, if this is not true, if x is not greater than 10, it's not going to even get here. So both of these have to be true for it to get there. For both of these to be true, what kind of logical operation does that sound? Like our logic worksheet. Does it sound like an or, if they both have to be true? No, I see some head shaking. Thanks. All right. It, that is an and. Nested ifs are an and condition. So we would want to go for the correct one that has and in it. Which in is correct. X greater than 10 and Y greater than 10. Well, this is looking awfully good, but I have another and to check. If X is greater than 10 and X greater than Y. No, because that expression does not appear anywhere in the question. So that's definitely wrong. I'm going to make a comment in my notes to the effect that nested ifs, which is an if inside of an if, like I had up here, an if indented inside of an if, nested ifs are the same as and, because they both have to be true. If this wasn't true, it wouldn't get to that one. If this is true, but this one's false, it's not going to get here. Hope that makes sense. All righty, greater than is true under what circumstance? You have a left operator and a right operator, and even though I confuse my left operators and the right operators a lot, if we write them down, left, right, and we say greater than, which is true. The right operand is equal to the left operand, that's when it's true? No, let's cross that off. You know what, I accidentally did mark on a white on the projector screen one time. And boy, did I feel stupid. Boy, did I spend a lot of time trying to clean that off. All right, so is it true? In fact, I'm going to put the lid back on it. Is it true that it's true if the left operand is greater than the right operand? Does that make it true? So that's the right answer, right? Even if I didn't check the others, that would be the right. But I better keep checking, right? Because if it was check boxes instead of circles, 
I like check boxes. Sometimes I throw them in. I'm, I'm not going to try to confuse you with them, though. The right operand is greater than the left operand. No, that's definitely false. And both B and C are true. No. When this is true, it would be if it was less than or equal. Because then it's true that it will trigger if the right is equal to the left, right? But it's not less than or equal. It's just less than. So there we go. Definitely take the exam. Yeah, I, I was about to say take it again, but you're not even taking it right now, most likely. Hopefully not. A something expression has one of two values, true or false. If you see the words true or false, yeah, bingo. That means that I like barbarian, though. <laughs> All right. It's a Boolean expression if it's true or false. Invented by a guy named George Boole. And it's a universe in which you only have two numbers, zero and not zero, right? Or zero and one, true and false. So Boolean values are true or false values. That's all they can equal. And I really, really, really need in this language, but not any other language I've used, to keep remembering to capitalize true and false. Because if I open up idle and I type in true lowercase, then it's not going to light up in the proper orange color or whatever it's supposed to. I hope I don't get one of these wrong and then, and then have to hang my head in shame. But if, if I do, we'll figure it out. Which of these is a trivial, that's the key word that I kept looking for when I said it, irrelevant. A trivial expression is one that's always true. A equals 100 or B greater than 200. That's not trivial. I'm going to skip down here because this one's really long. <laughs> if A is greater than B and B is greater than C. Well, that's not trivial because, you know, if the values are, aren't like that, it could be true or false. This one's also easy. If A is less than B and A is greater than 40, uh, is it possible for it to be less than 10 and greater than 40? No, so that's probably the trivial expression. Unless they have a different name for something that is always true as opposed to always uh, false. One would be less than greater than five. <laughs> yeah, if A is less than B and C, yeah, th there's nothing wrong with that as long as you have those variables. So I'm going for this one because it's no way for something to be less than 10 and greater than 40. But how can something be less than and greater than five also? They use that rather than not equal. Okay. And I apologize for the failure of the book. <laughs> this, this is like how it would be written in a math book. In every programming language I've ever used, and I swear, every programming language I've ever used, it's, it's exclamation mark equal. So good point. It just means not equal to 5. D not equal to 5. Which of the, f okay, I answered that one. Continue. In a selection, the else clause executes always? No. Well, what's an else clause? If I did this, if I've been good, Santa comes, else I get cold. Right. So this doesn't happen always unless it's impossible for me to be good. Does it happen when the tested condition is false? Yes. That's when it happens. I'm going to keep checking. When the test, because there, there always could be one that says both A and B or something like that. When the tested condition is true. No, else doesn't happen if it's true. That one happens. Only after the if clause executes. Oh. Technically, that's true. I hate it when they come up with things that are both, to, but this is the better answer. I can't argue with you of why I say it's a better answer. Well, that would mean that it's already got the if statement before, after it, or before it anyways, when the tested condition is false. Yeah. So I that's, believe when that's the, the same thing. Is false is right. I got that one wrong a second ago, and when I did only after the if clause executed. Yeah. So that's yeah. So just by bitter experience, you know that that one's not true. Yeah. So heck. In a selection, 
the else clause executes such violent language when the tested condition is true it's false and thanks guys I gotta do the indention on this not that I'm bitter alrighty and it's three levels deep because I see three in diffs no problem I can handle that alrighty so tab 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 you see how I'm doing it though after every if you tab, the else's get untabbed one, and the end ifs force an untabbing next. Trust me, if I put this problem in the exam, I would absolutely tab it correctly. All right, now that we can see it, now that we have our code, let's come and compare our answers. In the following problem, which pseudocode, or excuse me, which percentage will raise which percentage raise will an employee in department eight receive? Okay, so that's our variable. If department is equal to eight, department equals eight is the assumption. That's what they're asking. And what's their raise gonna be? Is department less than five? No. Else, so we're in this block. Is the department less than 14? Uh -uh. I see what they're doing. I guess they're saying that there is no department greater than or equal to 14 or else yeah okay I'm getting it so the ranges are 5 to 9 9 to 14 and 14 and greater and we have to figure out exactly based on what sense or equals to so anyways 8 is not true so it jumps in here if it's less than 14 that is true so it's medium raise it skips this else it doesn't even need to check that one because this one was true and so it looks to me like it's going to be medium raise. Just stepping through it. That condition's false, so it jumps to the else, but this one was true, so it does that. And then it skips to that end if and that end if. So I think they get a medium raise. I think that if uh, it was 14 or later, then they'd get a big raise. Now that's crazy, because what if it was six? They wouldn't get a raise at all. I went through that without inventing them and went with big raise and got it wrong. Or what if it was 10? Okay, anyways, maybe I'm totally wrong that, that that's written wrong, but following the logic, I'm pretty sure it's medium. You said big and it wasn't correct, so. All right, I looked out on that one. No, I'm kidding. We worked it through. All right, this ought to be simple. If x less than equal y is true, then is it true that y is less than or equal to x? No, we're just looking for the opposites now, right? So if x less than y is true, then what's the opposite? x greater than y. And it's true that if x less than equal to y is true, then the opposite has to be false. If you can't figure it out, just start plugging numbers in, but that's going to slow you down. Feel free to rip out a sheet of paper or grab one from the printer and start writing. But this is certainly not true. If x, it would be true if they were equal, but it's not always true. Is it always true that they're equal? No. Is it true that x is greater than or equal to y? No. Again, what would happen if it was equal if, if the values were equal? The values being equal is what breaks down these opposites. That's why you have to check very carefully for opposites being greater than, less than, or equal. It's not just that the opposite of less than is greater than. The opposite of less than is greater than equal and vice versa. Ooh, now we've got to do this again. If x less than equal to y is true, so what's the opposite? x greater than y. Yeah, I'm even smarter at this one now. Okay, here we go. In an AND condition, the most efficient technique is 
to ask the question first that is least likely to be true or most likely to be true? Well, in it, yeah, it's late, least. Why? Because you want to rule out as many as possible. I don't want to have to check your driver's license. Uh, let, let's say I'm, I'm really weird and I say nobody gets into my club unless you have red hair and you're greater than 18. I'm totally weird, right? But it's easier for me to check to see if you have red hair. I'd want to put that first, right? Because I don't want to check your driver's license if you don't have red hair. So in an AND condition, the most efficient do, way to do it, the first one should be the least likely to be true. Or is opposite, right? Because what if 100% of the people, 90% of the people have red hair and only 10% of the people are greater than 18, but I don't care as long as either one is true. If hair is equal to red or age greater than 18. I want to rule them out as fast as possible. I would put the one that's most true. So and put the one that is least often true. Now that's just for efficiency's sake. And Python is not that efficient of a language. So it's not like your program is going to break because you don't remember that. But if you go on and you write software for something a little bit more rigorous, you know, like cars now have hundreds of computers in them, and you want them to operate efficiently. All righty. If P is true and Q is false, then is it true that P or Q is true? I'm ruling this one out right away because these are numbers, right? And you don't say that true is greater than false, at least not in Python, right? So that one's just a X, X name, right? It's totally not true. But if P is true and Q is false, is it possible that P and Q is true? No, because what does and mean? They both have to be true. Are they both true? Nope. So that's a big no. If P is true or Q is false, it's, excuse me, P or Q is false, is that the same thing? No. Why do I say that? Because or means just one or the other has to be true. And P is true, so P or Q is true. Does that make sense, gang? Hope so. So that means that this one's true. Why? Because of or. Or means only one side or the other has to be true. So if either P is true or Q is true, it's going to wind up being true. Or if both of them are true. So much the better. I have red hair and I'm greater than 18. Which of the following must always be true? Another one of those trivial expressions. G equals 12 or H equals 17? No. That doesn't have to be true. There's no reason for it to have to be true. G is greater than 12 and G less than 21? No, that's just doing a range check to make sure that it's greater than 12 and less than 21, that it falls between those two values. If you're doing a range check, you want to see if something's between two values, you use AND. If you want to see if something is greater than, or I don't know why I'm facing a board, greater than or less than a certain value, you use or, right? It's greater than 100 degrees or less than zero. It means it's not liquid. Whatever. So I'm not liking that one. If G is less than 12 and G is greater than 18, is that always true? No. What if G was 13? In that case, G is not less than 12, and so this would be false. Ooh, now we have these diamonds here, but those are really not equals. Is it true that G is not equal to 12 or G is not equal to 15? Well, if G is not equal to 12, that's true. And it might be true that G is also not equal to 15, right? Might be. Let's think through it again. G not equal to 12, what if it was 12? Then that's false, but okay, or means one or the other. And so if it's 12, then it's not equal to 15. So now we have a false and a true. Good enough. Now let's do it the other way. What if G was 15? G not equal to 12? That's true because it was 15, so that's a big T under there. Or, well, one or the other has to be true. We can stop there. So that one. A 
trivial Boolean expression is one that is always true, is always false. Oh boy. I'm just going to have to take a guess unless one of you will tell me because I've got fr frankly forgotten. You saw me fumbling over that definition yeah, earlier. That's true, I think. Sounds good to me. A trivial expression is always true. Let's find out. They want it always false. I clicked the wrong one. Always has the same values. Oh, because then it's saying it's either always true or always false, but it always stays the same value. Okay, okay. I'll buy that. Okay, yeah. All right, so a trivial expression is one that always has the same value because it always goes to true, or maybe it always goes to false. Here's a trivial expression. X is equal to the zero times Y. Well, X is always equal to Y. Excuse me, X is always equal to zero, no matter what. X is equal to Y minus Y. Again, that always equals zero, whatever. But logically, a trivial expression always has the same value meaning it always evaluates evals <laughs> to true or always evals to false. Oh man, I missed one. All right, if D is true, E is false, and F is false, which of the following expressions is true? This is slightly more complicated because you have to remember that and has higher precedence, just like multiplication has higher precedence. What do I mean by that? If I have a is equal to 2 plus 3 times 4, if I don't remember that you have to do the multiplication first, then I'm going to get the wrong answer. I'm going to say 2 plus 3, which is 5, and I'm going to multiply it by 4, which is 20. But it should have been 3 times 4, which is 12 added to 2. So just remember that. Addition and s division have higher precedence. That's called operator precedence than addition and subtraction. Higher still is exponents. Higher still are parentheses. You always do the stuff inside the parentheses first. So if I really had wanted it to equal 20, I would put parentheses around there. Long story short, and has higher precedence than or. So we have to take it apart and figure out what it equals if and. So we do the ands first, f and d. Well, is f true? No, f is false. So that rules this one out right away. But we have to check e as well now. And I'm going to do these the slow way. I'm going to write this and put parentheses around the ands. That just helps my brain understand it. OK. So is E true? No, so this side is false. But it's an or, so we have to come back over here and check this. Is F true? False. No, so that's definitely a false all the way through, according to our starting values here. That one's wrong. Copy this one, paste it, put the parentheses around it, just because that helps my brain. And it's the same expression, honestly. Right? It's just that these two things have jumped sides. I'm not going to even work through it, although you could. This is probably true, but let's take a check. D or E and F. All righty. So is D true? Yes. Heck yeah. So we don't even need to keep going. So that's the true one. I don't know why I should capitalize true and forgot to capitalize. Yes. All right. And lastly, two of the above. No, we only got one of the above. I'm going to go with that. If, if J is not equal to K, then it might be true that J is equal to K. Both B and 
Yeah, it's not true. This is definitely not true. If j is not equal to k, it's impossible that j equals k. So cross that one out. But if j is not equal to k, it could be because j is greater than k or k, j is less than k. Man, this has a lot of true-false questions. If j is, oh, I haven't continued. All righty. Which of the following must always be false? This is just one of those. E is equal to 10 or E is equal to 20? No. It doesn't always have to be false. It could be that E is equal to 10. E is greater than 12 and E is less than 15? No, because it could be a 13 or 14 and that would evaluate the truth. E is greater than 10 and E less than 7? Is it possible for it to be bigger than 10 and smaller than 7? No, false. I should double check this one anyways. Is it possible for B to E to be greater than 12 or F to be greater than 12? Yeah, who cares? Uh, you know, that could be true, it could be false, depending upon the values of E or F. This is the only one that's always false. Another trivial expression. If A is true and B is false, A or B is false. No, because or means they, either one could be true and the result would be true. So that's not true because one of them is true. If A is true, then B must be true. Well, why would that be? That doesn't, that, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Because they say it's false here, so B is true. I'm not, I'm not liking that. <laughs> A and B is false. Now this is definitely true, right? Because it's true that A is true, but they both have to be true because it's and. And since B is false, I'm liking that one. All right, and if A is true and B is true, then is it the whole thing true? No, because and means that both sides have to be true. Uh, Did we do this one? Maybe it has a different starting value. There are two of those questions in the quiz. Okay, there, there's my mistake. Way to make me waste a minute tabbing them. All right, so we're starting with department 10 this time. Is 10 greater, is 10 less than 2? Nope. Jump down to the else block. Is 10 less than 6? No. Jump down to the else block. Is 10 less than 10? No. They didn't get a raise. All right. Impossible to tell. They didn't get a raise. I've worked it out in my head and then I worked it out with y'all. I'm not liking impossible to tell. According to this, they just don't get one. But we know we've ruled out the other ones. All right. If sales is 100, rate is 10%, and expenses is 50, is sales less than 200 or? Yeah, we've already gone far enough because it's an or. Either one is enough to trigger it. So that's definitely true, but it could be that two of them are true. Is it true that sales is greater than or equal to expenses? Yeah. Is it true that the rate is less than one? Ye yep. And so this one could also be true because and means that both sides have to be true. And they are. Expenses is equal to rate. Definitely not true. Or sales is equal to rate. Also not true. Definitely false there. So it was these two, which means my favorite answer to or above. I hate that kind of question. Especially if it gets to like, you know, B and C are true, and then A and C are true, you know, when, when you have like eight different choices. I just put check mark, you know, check boxes there. If condition 30 is 
30, if condition A is 30% more likely and condition B is only 10% likely, then when is it most efficient to test A first? This is a rewording of the other question. If it's an and, you want the least often to be true. If it's an or, you want the most often to be true. 30% is more than 10, so we'd want an or. If A is true, and B is true, and C is false, which of the following expressions is true? Remember that these two get, have to be done together. But it doesn't matter. Because once we're done with that, no matter whether B or C are true, A is true. That has to be true. But we have good old reliable two or the above, so we got to keep going. So A or, excuse me, A and B or C. Well, let's check C first, right, because it's the or. C, nope, that wouldn't prove it. How about A and B? Is it true that A and B are true? Yeah, it is. So this one also is true. How about this one, A and B and C? No, because and and would mean all of them have to be true, and that's not true because C is false. So it's definitely two of the above. Apparently, if you choose two of the above every time, you get it right. No, I'm not going to make that, answer, uh, that statement. All right. Hope that was educational. You can always go back and watch this again if you couldn't figure it out yourself. But figure it out yourself. Take it, figure it out yourself. All right, so what have our assignments been so far? All of our assignments are fair game. I could, I, I'm not going to ask you to write a turtle program. Hey, I know what's in there. Write code that will ask the user for their age, convert it to a float, and store it in a variable named A, right? That'd be fair. Okay, so what's the question for their age? So, you know, input, what is your age? Now remember, there's always like three ways of doing these things, and I don't want to take too long because we're coming out of time, but I could have done this. This is one possibility. I could do it in three steps. What is your age, right? And then on the next line, I could have my input statement, A is equal to input, and then on my third line, I could do the conversion to float. A is equal to float A. Now, this sure is a lot of typing. I'd rather do this. A is equal to float, parentheses, input, parentheses, quote, what is your age? See, much rather type that. Just make sure you get both closing parentheses because you get both opening. And if you feel like popping idle open to type in some of these things, it's totally fine. Unless you take it at the library. Be here so you don't have to take it at the library. Okay, so either one works, or even some combination of, of, of the two. Just go for that one, right? Why did I make it A rather than H? Because I told you to store it in a variable named A. Don't skip that. Likely, I'm going to just use the same thing, right? Ask the user for their age and make the variable named age, but I could have made it different. All right, so write an expression that calculates Two multiplied by three to the fourth power. Store the result in x, right? If I said that, store the result in x. Okay, x equals, there, I get partial credit just for typing that. Two multiplied by, in other words, two times, three to the power of four. How do I raise something to a power? Double asterisk. Double asterisk. And I love this language for having that because a lot of languages don't have an exponent operator. And just because you typed the upper pointing arrow in some other class, it doesn't work in this language, so you've got to do it that way. I'll give you partial credit if you do it the other way. Stuff like that. What if I gave you an, a picture of an equation like this? Um, formula for calculating surface area of sphere. What if I just copied and pasted this picture? Right, and I told you to express it as a formula. Express as Python. Well, I can't say for, let's pretend that this was pi, right? <laughs> 4 pi r squared. It'll make more sense in a picture, right? 
using the uh, word pi, write an expression. Okay, don't do this. 4 pi r to the power of 2. What's wrong with that? Python's not smart enough to know that it's supposed to magically multiply 4 by pi. Right? It needs that in there. It's not smart enough to know that pi r is two things. It needs that in there. That would be the answer. You're going to need to be able to draw a small flow chart or recognize it, right? If I ask you what a diamond is, tell me what the diamond is. There'll be choices like if and loop, you know, stuff like that. What is a diamond, right? What does a tilted rectangle mean? Tilted rectangle just means input or output. Math is in a regular rectangle. What is a regular rectangle? And I'm not going to ask you about the rectangle with the bars. But I could, right? <laughs> rectangle with bars. That seems to be new slang for hip hop to, to say that you really, you know, say your stuff good. A rectangle with bars is a module call. Calling another module. But I'm not going to ask that one. I'm just putting it there for completeness. Is it a true statement? Nah, I'm not going to even ask that, if that. Evaluating expressions. <clears throat> know your precedence. So if I say A is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 4 plus 1. Okay, not to the power of 4. That's, a, that's absurd. Right. Okay. So if I ask you to uh, tell me what that is. Sure, you could probably type it into some calculator, but don't. What happens first? Exponents happen first, right? Because it's PIMDAS. Parentheses, exponents, and then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So anyways, the exponent happens first. So it's like those are in parentheses. And 3 squared is 9. Then you do multiplication, so 2 times 9 is 18 plus 1 is 19. Explain why 1010 is equal to 10 in base 10. All right, that's because there's no 1s, but there's a 2. There's no 4s, but there's an 8. So if you ever have to figure this out, just put 8421 above it. Are there any 8s in it? There sure are, right? Are there any fours in it? Nope, nope because there's a zero there. Are there any, any twos? Yep. yep. Are there any ones? Nope. nope, that's enough. Right, that proves it. I mean, I could ask dumb things like this just to give you free points. Which library lets you make random numbers? Random. <laughs> Which library gives you um, turtle graphics? These would be free points, right? Turtle. Which library gives you math abilities? <laughs> math. <laughs> All right, so there we go, right? You can get the value of pi from math, for example, if you want to do it exactly, but I'm not going to ask you for the syntax. I don't even know if we've covered it. So know how to write code. Know how to write, this, this would be like the thing at the end of the program, a program that asks for temperature, or TF, temperature in Fahrenheit, and calculates and prints temperature in C based on the formula that TF minus 32 divided by 9 over 2 
divided by 1.8, right, is equal to the temperature in C. Hopefully that's not too hard. You just need an input statement to get TF, and then you need to write TC is equal to that expression. Now, I may not do that one, right? I may ask you to convert pounds to ounces or something, but. I think that's about enough. You're gonna to wanna to look over your homework, make sure that you comprehend what you did, and you're gonna to wanna to look at the MindTap exams, and you're gonna be good to go. Oh, I always have to ask modulus. People hate modulus, so I have to ask it. What is 8 modulus 2? That just means 2 goes into 8. Is there a remainder? No, it's an even number. So there's a remainder of 0. What is 9 modulus 2? Is there a remainder? Yeah, there is a remainder because it's not an even number. 2 goes into 9 four times with a remainder of 1. So these are modulus problems. Modulus is spelled with 1L unlike what my keyboard thinks. All right, gang. Let's uh, make another Dropbox. Stop the recording. Y'all can hang out and ask